General Benai. A luscious tree blossoming in the dawn as the morning dew evaporates off the beige bark of the ellipsis tree. Specks of purple and yellow from the leaves burned from the sun hold vibrant in the fog. The leaves droop with a sway on the light wind approaching fr w from the south. Dominant patches of green and yellow green along the leaves with edges outlined with a hue of dark green as if moss had covered the leaves. Sap bubbles along the crevasses of the beige bark formed from years of bleeding as dry air would force its way into the tree and open its arteries to the open air where pools of caramel sap formed and dried as if in a furnace complete with pockets of stagnant air. Leaves with curled undersides, exposure of igneous veins, bulging above the undersides can barely sway in the dawn's soft wind while morning dew pools along their edges and slide down into the cupped recesses of the leaves. The shadow of the western mountains hug the tree from the base to its furthest most branch as the beige grew darker to the east formed upon each triplet of leaves a yellow flower had bud began to bloom and its petals exploded open it their middles spurred lime green with golden trumpets the base of the tree was crowded from moss as its upper roots jutted forth into the soil forming low-lying arms. Its bottom branch nearly touches the earth, accompanied with a twin to its shadowing side, struggling for water and sunlight. It grows like a styrofoam sog, and the branch begins to free fall to the earth. It di disintegrates upon impact. The tree compacted beyond its lower branch with twists and turns as if around a central pole of light, whereupon on all sides branches reach towards the sky, seeking as if in deep thought. From under its trunk a flower thrives, and drinks of the falling water of the tree's morning dew. Vibrant reds cast the flower against the grays of dawn's fog. The stem of the flower bends and arcs its way th slightly above the last root of the tree stretching outward against the beige bark of the tree untouched by the shade of the first branch as a blue songbird perches upon the tree's first branch it chippers and chirps awaiting the sunshine its underbelly pale and its wings tips feathered silver stripes its wings flutter as clouds cover the valley and the tree the tree's top begins to shake Echoing thunder cascades across the valley as the earth is nearly straddled by a giant stone, and boulders plummet forth from the mountains. Sheets of ice shear down the cliffs and along ravines, and water floods into the banks of the mountains. Fraggled rocks with shearing plains of non-vertices and splinters of crystalline structures from shattered geodes and plain sheet rock force the water into curves. Pillars speckled across the lower remnants of the mountain are forced to the earth as the water cuts into its plains and fields and valley and a river is forged. A leaf falls and the wind carries it to the bank of the newly formed river bended bank its branch rotuning over its lower branches, weaving underneath their barren patches of bark-covered limbs and around their twigs as it narrows to a tip of quadruplet leaflets. The shortest branch was abrupt by its, abrupted by its lower reels backward towards the and around its center with its leaves reaching as high as they can towards the sky, a split vertical forming a V branch to its northern side and a T bend downward it underpassed the shortest branch and the rotuning branch. The bark shortens and thins into its upper branches and the splits of weaves narrow, narrowly grow. 
Towards the trunk they widen, and in the middle a very obvious horizontal raw bent split in the bark with gradient layers of bark climbing to a bump. A clinging branch wraps around to the top leaves, slender cuts in the bark, and an in intralk mark stands out on its multiple bends. A Sanhedrin of Dravel Rogues lands upon its lower branch, and the earth is scratched with deepening fruves from its weight. As the sun surpasses the lowest peak of the western mountains, the sky turns a Tereshkova gray. The upper half of the clouds turn a lime blue. The peaks reflect a glinting ray of yellow-orange sunlight. The last of the morning dew tapers into the red flower. The earth settles and water flows from the northern valleys and bogs. Crippets fill its bins with troubled swamp brews of stinky solutions. Rippling bulges over boulders and crivets of swirling water flows around ever-deepening bins and undertones regent regises, regises. Its rinds thresh beyond the folds of bins and fickling bubbles swell. Winds quicken and the tree bows towards the earth. Branches rebound and again it is uprighted. Joints quicken and the tree bows once again towards the earth, startling the dravel rogues. They fly away, and the lower branch flings towards the sky. In the earth's soil, the mark of the Drovel rogues left behind reads a quick message. Drovel rogue, trivel brogues, in velog's troph, wingless bird that bears dementia. Squirrels attempt nesting in the tree as the wind howls above the mountain's peaks, the branches swing and sway, and the squirrels are all knocked away. Hefted from their egg-white bellies and tossed to the air, they are leapt to the side, and the tree's branches return straight again and begin to hunch. Until the air swirled and the branches formed interlocking knits and weaves and tightened into a cornered knot, dwindling boughs and bows and slings of arched branches forming ringlets around and above its under center. The central light grew and grew and the tree thickened with its beige bark and flowers fell to the ground, giving a fast blooming show that did not last beyond the sunrise. Cascading flows of mellowing yellow clouds form around the mountains and encompass the valley. Fluffed Fluffed ri rifles, riffles align their ridges, and swirling gapes center around the tree. The tree lightens, and the branches lift slightly higher towards the sky as vi vines of grapes wrap their way around the trunk. They assemble a message around the trunk, and the shell of the vines resemble wet squirrel fit fur. Shining peels fall back from the vines as blistering sparkles appear on the leaves. The vines bind around the branches of the tree, cur and cur and cur. Its branches crackled against the vines, and the moisture of the vines subdued the tree's bleeding, and in its shield it reads, In ma ga mi, hi na o shi na ga ni shi ro, in ma ga mi ga ma ni shi na gi ro. I'm only me having aquatic nothingness, has with an eye, is the lasting fire, which are to become like liquid. The vines hitched against the tree's branches, and in the wind sheared against the shell's coats, and marlowed another. The narrows gate from the other side of the tree, a low-lying shrubbery, competes with red ferns.